My parents are on their way out the door. Eat dinner. They call, but I'm too fast for them. Their voices recede in the distance as I race through the house. Bouncing off the walls. I've been pleading with them to let me stay home by myself, and so they do. Heading towards off to their meetings or dinners or unknown places. Maybe not a great idea to let a 10-year-old stay home alone, but I've twisted their arms. And they've immersed in work and their own nightmare in marriage, avoiding each other, avoiding fights, thinking of reasons to They work off. compulsively, and they're not working to see friends, putting on the face of the happy couple. Everything's fine. They're perfect little family. People tell us all the time. I'm home alone with a raw steak at the counter, hopping up and down, my mind jetting about. Time for homework. I reach up into my bag. Woo! Here's my backpack. I reach up into my bag and throw my books and papers into the air. <laughs> oh, more homework! Watch this, ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Aria. Look at her go. Can you believe the incredible speed? <laughs> Woo! Okay. My homework covers the kitchen floor. I crawl around picking it up, taking uh, my, talking to myself. Hip hop, my friends never liked rabbits. Must get a tiger. It will sleep in my bed. Take it for walks. I need new shoes, fabulous shoes. I'll show all of them. Heart the Herald Angel sing. Christmas is smashing. Love it. People just love it. I hop up, slap my hand to my chest, and salute the fridge. Click my heel, and make a sharp turn, and walk stiffly over to the kitchen table, where I whip through the papers lying, laying them out perfectly in a complex system. The most efficient system, each corner of each page, touching the corner exactly to the next. Having arranged the papers, I gallop up and down the hallway. I slide back into the kitchen as if I'm sliding into third place, yank open the refrigerator, pull out some mushrooms, <laughs> chop them up, my knife a blur. Toss them into the frying pan, saute them. But they need a little something, a little zing. I pull open the cupboard beneath the sink and pull out the brandy. Ugh. Splash it into the pan. But now that I think of it, what are all those bottles? I turn off the burner, bouncing up and down, and open the cupboard. Again, booze! I pull out a jug of gallop stagger underneath it to wait a little, a little wine with dinner. The very thing, don't you think? I pour it into a giant plastic Minnesota Twins cup. Hmm. Oh, there it is. And collapse with my mushrooms and a tankard of wine at the dining room table. <sighs> I get absolutely shit-faced. I'm shit-faced and hyper and 10 years old. I'm having the time of my life. I look up and down the hallway singing Simon and Garfunkel songs, juggling oranges, I do my homework in a flurry of brilliance. Total efficiency. The electric grid of my mind snapping and flashing with lights. I am in the zone, the perfect balance between manic and drunk. I am mellow. I'm cool as a cat. I found the answer, the one thing that takes the edge off. Smooth out the madness, sends me sailing, and lifts me up and lets me fly. It's alchemy. The booze and my brain, another ho homemade mood stabilizer, and it stabilizes me in a heavenly mood. I 
I'm in love with the world, gregarious, full of joy and generosity towards my fellow man. My thoughts fly up, but, but not up and down. They soar forward in a thrilling flight of ideas, heightening sensation, a creative rush, each thought tumbling into the next. It's even more perfect than eating and throwing up. My future with alcohol is long and disastrous, but at first works wonders for me. I'm no longer low, but yet too high. Just on a, just on a roll, energetic, inspired. I truly believe the booze is helping me. I'll believe this despite all evidence for years. Eventually, I stagger into bed, and for once, I fall asleep. He mispronounces my name, and I correct him as usual. This is how all psychiatric visits start. He looks friendly enough, so I decide to give him a chance. What brings you here today? I'm going crazy. Well, don't beat around the bush. Jump right in. I'm going nuts. I mean, I am nuts. I've always been nuts. They've been telling me I have depression for years, but they're wrong. I used to have an eating disorder. They're always giving me Prozac. I know, I know. You'll probably give me Prozac too, which is okay. I understand. You have to give me something, though. I should mention that if you had something other than Prozac, I would be open to trying it, just so you know. In fact, I'm open to pretty much anything at this point. I'm kind of desperate. Weirdly, I laugh. <laughs> I mean, kind of really desperate. Not to make a fuss or anything. I don't want to overstate my case. I don't want to be malingering. Do you think I'm malingering? A nurse once told me I was malingering when I told her the Prozac was making me crazy. What exactly is malingering? It's when you're making a big deal out of nothing, making symptoms seem worse than they are. See? Exactly. I don't want to be malingering. I definitely don't want to make something out of nothing. You're not malingering. Well, that's good. But anyways, really, now that I think of it, this really is nothing. It's not such a big deal, I mean. I'm not crazy crazy. I'm not wandering around with a grocery cart full of newspapers and cans talking to myself. I mean, I talk to myself a little, but not in a crazy way. Doesn't everyone talk to themselves? He nods. He sits with his hands folded at his desk. He hasn't written anything in his notepad and appears oddly to be listening. I appreciate his attention. It's very courteous of him. By the way, oh my gosh, I'm going on and on. I know you're busy. I know you must have a million patients. Have I already used up my time? No. How much time do I have? As much as you want. This is a private practice. I'm not an HMO, so no rush. Well, <sighs> I collapsed back in my chair. I noticed I've been sitting bolt upright the whole time. Thank goodness. I take a little breather. May I ask you something? Sure. I say feeling magnanimous. Do you always talk this fast? Yes. Okay. Go on. What was I saying? Feeling crazy, but not crazy crazy. Right. Um, so I guess that's it. Do you mind if I look around? Not at all. He says, so I get up and go over to his bookcase, and he reads and read all the titles and look at the framed photos and laugh at the little framed cartoons. A man lying on a couch yammering on and the doctor's writing totally nuts on his little pad. And I go over to the window and hop off on the sill and swing my feet a little bit. Then hop back down and come back and sit in my chair. All better? He asks laughing. Has anyone ever mentioned the word mania to you? How do we know who we are or what we can become? We tell ourselves stories. The stories we tell are what we know of ourselves. We are creation, a product of our own minds a pastiche of memory, dream, fear, desire. My memory looks like a child's collage or a ransom note, incomplete and full of holes. 
All I have is today, this moment to work with. I am writing my story as I go. I am inventing myself one moment, one experience at a time. And that's all right. It means I can choose who I become. It means I can write my future. I can create a person, write a story full of hope. The mind is the seed of all that we are, the source of all we create. As strange and imperfect as mine may be, I also owe my career and passion to it. It is the source of all we think and feel. And while I feel and think, as Byron said, a bit too wildly at times, I also delight in the workings of the intellect and imagination, the ways that people are able to feel with and for one another, the deep experiences of feeling at all. My brain sometimes departs from the agreed upon reality, and my private reality is a very lonely place. But in the end, I'm not sure I wish I'd ever gone there. I'd never gone there. I find value in having been to the places I've been. While there are days when I wish to God I could trade my brain with someone else just for one minute, just long enough to get some peace, I wouldn't exchange the life of my mind for the life of another. I am who I am. This is the way it is. A balance, maybe an uncomfortable one. It's about doing all the necessary, frustrating, boring, exacerbating, annoying, banal everyday task to keep the episodes at bay, but accepting that they'll come at some point anyway. Structuring life tightly in order to function well, but being flexible enough to deal with the unexpected. Embracing the bizarre notion that sometimes things might go wrong, but at other times they might not. I try to build a future out of contradictions, madness, is, one, is only a small part of my life. Yet sometimes it completely takes over and tries to destroy me. Both things are true, that's all right. It has to be, and it is. I relish my life. It is a life of which I am fiercely protective. I have rested it, I have wrestled it, no. I have rested it back from the madness and madness cannot take it away from me again. I will not throw it away. So if it is, so what if it isn't a normal life? It's the one I have. It's difficult, beautiful, painful, full of laughter, passing strange. Whatever else it is, whatever it brings, it's mine.